Hello and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to be looking at some of the best insults from 8 out of 10 cats does countdown. These are Jimmy Carr insults. This is apparently part 8, but I'm not too worried <laughs> about watching these out of order. Um, at some point I would like to go back and watch some more of them, but for now, we're on part 8. I want to see some of these nasty things that this man is going to tell to the contestants on 8 out of 10 cats because eh, that's the kind of chaos I'm living for today. Sue me. Um, don't, actually. Uh, but if there's something else in, like this that you'd like me to look at, please let me know in the comments below. With that being said, without further ado, let's watch some people get roasted. Rachel has a master's degree in maths from Oxford University. Frankly, using her for the maths on Countdown is like using the Large Hadron Collider as a water slide. <laughs> Russell's T-shirts are so tight he looks like a toddler that was granted a magic wish to be big. <laughs> that shirt's not that tight. Tom says he used to dress in Victorian clothing as a teenager to disguise the fact he was gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom, that'll throw him off the scent. <laughs> Jonathan owns a number of exotic pets, including an iguana. Brightly coloured, with soft, leathery skin and a bulging neck, Jonathan is one of the most distinctive faces on television. <laughs> yeah. Well, very funny, Jimmy, but the iguana's dead, and you raised <laughs> Dave as a joke. You are a terrible person. <laughs> I, I went for iguana, you went with... Dave. What, how did you pronounce iguana? Well, it, it had its na iguana. Okay. You did say iguana. The first. Ig you can... <laughs> I preferred iguana. I thought, I I thought was... you were getting it right. I thought I you were dead. Does it matter? <laughs> uh, Sarah is from the northeast, and fun fact: human beings share ninety-nine point nine percent of our DNA with Geordies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey! Technically a sand dancer, so South Shields. But a also... sand dancer. Yeah, but it sounds rubbish, doesn't it? My hometown is Southport, and they are the sand grounders. Just, uh, oh, not, really? It's not all comedy, some of it's information. <laughs> <laughs> My hometown is Lancaster and we call ourselves Lancastrians because we don't like to take the piss. <laughs> James, where are you from and what do they call you lot? I'm from Kettering and they call us Legends. <laughs> <laughs> and to obnunciate is to announce bad news. As used in the sentence, the shopkeeper obnunciated, I'm sorry Rachel, but we only have that particular dress in a child size. <laughs> Rude. Saves on VAT, you'd know all about that, Jimmy. Saves on VAT. <laughs> I do like it when they come right back at him. Stephen provided the voice for the Postman Pat movie. I saw it and was shocked. It involved more licking, stamping and stuffing big packages into tiny slots than any film since Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> That's also the childhood, the child's icon you've just besmirched with your filth. <laughs> you were the voice of Postman Pat? Yeah. Did you create a backstory for him or anything? Yeah, because he was in a TV series before the film. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Stephen, yeah. who did you take over from? Who was the voice in the telly show? Well, a very unhappy man. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> Just wondering how he feels about it all. Well, I look at it like Bond, really. <laughs> yeah. You move yeah. on, there's different Bonds, no one gets upset. There's wow. different Pats. There's different Pats. <laughs> Same. Idris Elba's going to be the next postman <laughs> Pat. <laughs> Before finding fame on The Daily Show in America, Michelle worked on Wall Street. So her surname is Wolf, and she used to work on Wall Street. <laughs> She's just like that film. Annie. <laughs> in 2016, John became a father. Must have been amazing holding that child for the first time and thinking, wow, just nine months ago, I was sitting at home waiting for my wife to get back from her yoga retreat. <laughs> What a weekend. <laughs> Where would we be without Rachel Riley? I thought he was going for, gonna go for like a, wow, in two months this one will be bigger than me sort of joke, because they make a lot of jokes about him being short. I, that's kind of where I thought he was going. Well, we could probably just move the letters board closer to Susie. It's not like she's rushed <laughs> off her feet. <laughs> Rachel appeared on a celebrity version of Child Genius where she was beaten by a 12-year-old in a maths challenge. And there's me thinking dancing on Strictly would have been the most embarrassing thing in your career. <laughs> Johnny Vegas has show business running through his veins as well as dangerously high levels of saturated fat. <laughs> Dude, uh... You've all come back to butter. <laughs> 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 I was not during the margarine years. 
Your love of butter. I mean, you said you've outlived Prince and David Bowie. Who, who would have thought it? <laughs> Only because I'm younger. <laughs> Michelle! <laughs> we should probably crack on with the show because judging by Rachel's dress, she clearly has a hen do to get to. I was thinking she looks like an Easter egg. That was the first thing that popped into my head. She looks like... <laughs> I had quite a few hen do's this year, actually. Did you? One of them, I dressed up my friend as a tortoise with a penis. That's nice. Yes, there is a story. I'm really proud of that. A tortoise with a penis. <laughs> yeah. She loves tortoises, so we all went out. And penises. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we were in Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> no, your mum's going, yeah? No, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was like, that was a good night, actually, yeah. <laughs> she really came out <laughs> of her shell. <laughs> John recently became a father. John's got OCD, so the conception took a while as as soon as he turned his wife on, he had to go back and make sure he turned her off again. <laughs> Rachel Wiley has a degree from Oxford, and her tutors have a degree of sadness when they think about her chosen career path. <laughs> <laughs> Joe lives in Brighton. He fits right in, because if there's one thing the residents of Brighton love, it's a hairy bum. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, do you know who any of us are? No. I thought, uh, when I saw you, I thought maybe Benedict Cumberbatch had gotten in a terrible accident. <laughs> the really hurtful thing about that is I sort of take that as a compliment. <laughs> when you want gingerbread man? Yeah, gingerbread you. I've got a gingerbread Susie. You can eat that if you want. I mean, you're more than wow. welcome. I've got ro oh, Rochine's quite pretty. Look, look at that. Yes. Oh, is it edible? Robert? Yeah, yes. of course it's edible. Uh, hang on. We always have to ask. Nice. <laughs> 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 oh, put one for John. There's the short joke. Not as every girl's dream if what that girl is dreaming of is a 40 something goth crow. <laughs> no, you're pretty rock and roll, and Countdown isn't. How would you make this show kind of more. More kind of cool. Mm, don't know. You could, the desks could be on fire or something. <laughs> <laughs> Different host. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have the Riddler from Batman on it every week. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not. Yeah, you're right. It's not what, sorry? <laughs> I've already tried to bite into it and I really gave it a good go and she wouldn't give. <laughs> <laughs> a baby porcupine is called a porcupet. Porcupet is also a chat up line in Newcastle. Machine. The inedible gingerbread man, how's that going? <laughs> how's, the, uh, how's that going down here? I talked around. <laughs> how, much, uh, how much is left of that gingerbread man? She's <laughs> literally legless. <laughs> Where would James be without comedy? Well, I imagine hanging out at a games workshop wondering what it's like to touch a girl's boob. <laughs> I'm still doing half of those things. <laughs> I'm not saying Chris Addison has weirdly long limbs, but I'm not sure whether to laugh at him or trap him under a glass and put him outside. <laughs> Herkel Durkel is an old Scottish term meaning to lounge in bed all day. Hey, Scottish people, you can't lie in bed all day unless, of course, you've given the Domino's delivery guy his own key. <laughs> Rachel, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, in 10 years, hopefully, I'll have been working in telly for 18 years, so I'll probably be testifying against someone I've worked with. <laughs> She's the quick. Domino Trio have an incredibly dedicated following, by which I mean they're being monitored very closely by the police. <laughs> <laughs> Should we respond or? <laughs> Johnny, what was your five? Phone. What, oh, sorry? <laughs> Phone! <laughs> Tolkien typed the 1,200-page manuscript of Lord of the Rings using... What was with the moustache on that? What was that? <laughs> ...only two fingers. I bet that was bloody Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, you often tweet about celebrities. If you could go on holiday with any celebrity, who would it be? <gasps> oh, my gosh. I'd probably go on holiday with you. <laughs> Excellent choice. What, what, why me? <laughs> I mean, I think you're super fun, and I know you live a lavish lifestyle, and, like... I think you need a best friend. <laughs> and we out. Have... <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm a real boy. <laughs> <laughs>
Lee excelled at school. Sorry, Lee was expelled at school. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothermia is a state in which the core temperature of the body falls below 35 degrees. I love that Lee was like proud. He's like, yes, I was. I was super expelled. I don't know. The worst thing I've ever happened. Like, I got detention. I got lunch detention a lot. Only got after school detention once. People who die from it include mountaineers and during a cold snap, viewers of regular countdown. <laughs> David has that just got out of bed look if the bed was some flattened cardboard boxes in the doorway of a Curry's Digital. <laughs> you look like Dracula's less successful younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> countdown. <laughs> Start with... Countdown. <laughs> the, um, a consonant, please. Thank you, Rachel. Lee. M. Uh, vowel? V. Upside down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's your only job, Rachel. V. Susie has written 14 books all about the derivations of words and phrases. Susie, where do you get your lack of ideas from? <laughs> In David's most recent book, he named a squirrel after Susie Dent. Small, wild and with an insatiable appetite for nuts. Susie was delighted. <laughs> Oxford English Dictionary grows by over 4,000 words a year. No wonder Susie Dent's worn out. Well, that and the dogging. <laughs> Susie doesn't really enjoy being famous and goes... Well, so this is, the, this is the Susie hour where we, like, come for Susie Dent, huh? ...to great lengths to avoid being recognised. For example, when she's in her car, she wears sunglasses and a hat, so the other doggers don't know it's her. <laughs> Susie Dent knows the derivations of even the rudest words and phrases. So, where does cock gobbler come from? Well, she was born in Woking, but now she lives in Oxford. <laughs> my baby, that's my baby, huh? It's always banging that door, aren't you? <laughs> Are you talking to Susie or me now? <laughs> She's never banging on my door, I have to say. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> Susie has written 14 books about the derivations of words, and you can find them all in your local library. Just ask for the Sleepy Go Bye Bye section. <laughs> okay, Susie, what have you been looking into recently? Other than glory holes. <laughs> Sorry, Susie. <laughs> he made himself cry with that one. <laughs> Why all of the jokes about that for her specifically? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, what have you been looking into recently? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is all the effect of my having brought me. <laughs> no, I've been looking into the, uh, the language of doctors, which is quite interesting. Okay. But things like um, brothel sprouts. Was, brothel sprouts? Yeah, you know, doctors have these ridiculous names to try and... The black humour, sick humour, to yeah. try and, you know, keep the horrible stuff at bay. So brothel sprouts, uh, basically genital, genital warts. Sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> to make <laughs> um, Yes, that's it, really. I can't. I'm just thinking glory hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about glory. Mish once went to see the film Shame with his dad, but said the graphic sex made it very awkward. Everyone in the cinema asked them to stop. <laughs> Oh my God. All right, well, some of those are pretty good. I don't know, I don't know enough about uh, Susie Dent, I guess, or what dogging is. I know that somebody wants me to listen to the fascinating Ava, Ada song, Dogging, presumably to learn what that specifically is. <clears throat> Let's keep it clean in the comments, if we can, um, as much as possible with this particular choice of video <laughs> but all right there we go that was uh some of the best insults on eight out of ten cats does countdown some of those were quite good um and i some of those were very very funny 
I really like it when they like when Jimmy Carr just makes himself laugh and like he just can't handle his own humor. <laughs> I appreciate that. He's like, oh, well, because sometimes you just say something and then it's like that said it's out. It's out in the it's out in the ether now. Can't can't unsay it. Can't go back. Can't rewind. It's on TV. It happens. Um <laughs> Thank you again so much for watching. Uh, if you want something in particular for me to react to, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Be it comedy, be it music, be it history, whatever you want me to look at, let me know in the comments below. Um, and I will see you in the next one.